I feel like most people are probably they maybe like come across the project at some point, even if they don't necessarily daily drive it. But for anyone who maybe has no idea what the project actually is, can you give sort of a brief overview of it, and then we can get sort of more into why it exists and sort of the the, the reason why someone might want to use it. Sure, yeah. Um, Bazite as it is today is a Linux uh, custom image designed to make gaming on Linux as easy as possible for the average user. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's for all hardware, whether it's a handheld or a home theater PC. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's something you can game on, Bazite very likely runs on it. Mm -hmm. How long has Bazite been around for now? Uh, just over two years. Okay, I thought it'd been longer. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe up. No, it's, it's been a wild ride, that's for sure. Yeah, my uh, my my center time over the past couple of years, I feel like this is for most people, kind of just like out of the window. I have no idea when anything came out, when anything started. Yeah, well, I mean, the growth has just been crazy too. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel like a two-year-old project anymore. Mm -hmm. So, wait, when did the Steam Deck come out? I feel like it has, is it around the same time? Uh, yeah, it was out for a fair bit before we started. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the origin story, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, this is a, a th yeah. So it's February twenty twenty two. This is something that often comes up whenever discussions of Bazite come up. You'll hear people talk, especially those who are maybe not necessarily Linux users themselves. They'll see SteamOS as this sort of holy grail, this thing in the distance, when SteamOS is generally available, then gaming on Linux is going to be good. I've said my piece on that many, many, many times. But I do think yeah. Bazite is sort of in that position to fulfill the wishes that most people are looking for when they are looking for that, that magical SteamOS. Yeah, well, you know, first off, thank you for that. Um, <laughs> I, before I did Bazite, you know, I was in game development, so, uh, and even before that, I made um, Half-Life mods. So okay. I've been dealing with Valve for, you know, a very long time. Mm. They're kind of in the position where everything they touch turns to gold, so the community sort of sees their, you know, like, they have the minus touch. Like, right. if, if SteamOS comes out, it must be good. <laughs> but, you know, you and I are pretty deep into the Linux ecosystem, we're kind of able to see you know, where the limitations are, right? They have a smaller team, um, it's Arch-based, you know, it's this sort of like snapshot amalgamation. So there's areas that SteamOS is just not ever really going to touch. And I think Bazite sort of fills in that that gray area. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the, the life that it's taken on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that the Steam Deck is sort of part of the origin story of the project. Um, yeah. How does that sort of come about? Like, why did the project sort of begin? Yeah, well, that site started by accident. Um, I spent about six months in the uh, Steam Deck Discord doing support because uh, I had been using Fedora Silverblue, which is their uh, atomic variant on my desktop computer. I was already very well versed in kind of working around having a read-only route. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that translated to SteamOS. So I'd pop in there, you know, there'd be some question like, hey, you know, how do I use Docker? Like, uh, how can I install my office tools? Mm -hmm. um, why, why is it when I install something and the system updates, it gets wiped out? Mm -hmm. So I, I help people through it. I kind of figured out all of the rough patches of SteamOS that needed work. And then one day I realized, you know, hey, these are just a few packages. I, I could port these over to the Fedora ecosystem mm -hmm. and I could build this on top of uh, Fedora Silverblue and have a much stronger, much more modifiable read-only route than what SteamOS offers. Let's give it a shot. Mm -hmm. So I did that in a weekend. I had something that you know worked well enough and I, I dropped it, I walked away. And then about two weeks later, I came back and found like 14 open pull requests and said, okay, you know, we have something here. And the project's just kind of ballooned ever since. Is that part of the Bazite repo or is that its own separate thing? Is that, if it is, is there still somewhere online I can see that? Um, yeah, I can probably link you to my personal Bazite repo that closed when we became part of Universal Blue. Okay, okay. So 
it, okay, it is, it is like a separate thing then. It was like, okay, when you were doing our own thing under Silver Blue, and now we're part of You Blue, so it's it's like a, a new continuation then. Yeah, well, it was a seamless transition. I just changed the from tag and the okay, container right. file from Universal Blue. But right, it used to right. live under my GitHub repo because I wasn't part of You Blue, and I wasn't really intending on it being any more than just a experiment. Mm -hmm. Well, why did you go from building things off of Silver Blue, which is the upstream Fedora base, to being part of you Blue? Like, how how did that transition come about? Uh, actually, you know, part of the inspiration behind Bazai Two was uh, watching George Castro's videos, where he was, you know, demonstrating making custom images on top of silver blue mm -hmm. so i was already using a lot of the things he pioneered mm -hmm. and then when he uh reached out to me and was like hey come join us i mean that was a natural fit right so you affected... also gave us some really nice benefits for gaming too because you blue already had nvidia images so we made a bazite nvidia mm -hmm. build pretty much the same weekend we moved so you're effectively doing a lot of the stuff that you blue was doing anyway so you might as well just take the thing that's doing the work so you don't have to do it again Exactly, yeah. You, you Blue has the main images, which are where most of the minor changes go into. Mm -hmm. So that lets us all, you know, save work by having one repo for, you know, the solid base that we all build upon. Mm -hmm. I think we should probably talk about what, um, for anyone who's unaware, what you Blue is, because that's going to that's gonna come up a number of times throughout the episode. I feel like a lot of people mm -hmm. probably have come across it or at least heard about some of the projects that are a part of it like bluefin like aurora like bazite um but for anyone who may not be aware of what this sort of collection of projects is and how it all fits together i i think just a, a brief explanation there is probably going to help as well yeah uh universal blue is an organization dedicated to bringing um cloud native tooling to the linux desktop um that doesn't mean it runs in the cloud or anything of the sort. It just means the tools and techniques that are used on the cloud in massive Linux servers being uh, used to build a desktop image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Uh, okay, so <laughs> just one more thing. The cloud native term. I, I know people like to use that term. It's, it's, it's not a term most people understand. Yeah, I mean... It, this is kind of the funny part, right? Mm -hmm. This stuff is as linux as it gets right the cloud native computing foundation is part of the linux foundation yeah, yeah. and the cloud native images are the majority of linux mm. um, yeah when we the, talk the about like the developer and like, in... it, yeah like the, the the developer and the um the enterprise space like this is a term that most people are aware of there but bazite isn't really focused towards those people it's to like general gamers and that's more like linux desktopy people who they're they're like aware of containers and things like that but probably don't use the cloud native term much themselves or if ever exactly i mean and that's part of why we don't go way out of our way to say you know oh this is cloud native these are images you know it's it's Linux and it auto updates and it doesn't break when it updates. Like mm -hmm. that's the the main benefit to the end user and why we push this tech. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, the um the whole image thing's always a interesting conversation. Why do you feel like it is beneficial to have an image based system? Because most people out there are still running these traditional desktops, whether it be something Arch, whether it be regular Fedora, or, you know, anything else out there. But what is it that makes an image-based system make more sense, at least in your mind? Uh, for me, it's stability and testing. Mm -hmm. um, when I update an image-based system, I'm not updating individual packages. I'm mm -hmm. just grabbing the absolute latest and greatest version of that image and rolling it on top of my uh, existing install. Mm -hmm. So that can be tested ahead of time and, you know, is. Uh, that is a good known state where anyone who is trying to support you has the exact same files on their system bit for bit. And then there's all the other benefits of an image-based system like rollbacks, uh, even arbitrary to a given date, mm -hmm. or by tag. Like uh, if you are an NVIDIA user and you decide the previous NVIDIA driver is a better fit for you, mm -hmm. we tag our images by the driver in the image. So you can, with the one command, roll back to the last build of the previous 
driver, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. So those sorts of benefits, I think, make for a you know much more uh, compelling desktop experience where you're not really fighting package management problems. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you need to, if if there's some package you need not in the image, that's where containers like DistroBox or you know features like Brew or mm -hmm. any number of other systems we have come into play. Mm -hmm.